Jesus because he first oh, come on, loved me. Thank you. 
I'm going to preach some very familiar scripture tonight. Nothing new. You've heard this message from probably many ministers many, many times. But I'm using it to lay a foundation for a testimony that I want to share with you in the message. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word of God. The God in the Lord than anything, I thank you for the unction of the Holy Ghost that I feel right now in this house. And God, I pray that you would anoint to preach the simplicity of your gospel. Father God, through the sharing of your word and through the sharing of the testimony of your power, God, that somebody will receive something special in this house tonight. And God will give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise in Jesus' name. We've heard the woman with the issue of blood many times. I've heard ministers go in a lot of directions about the issue of her blood. I have heard many take that and go in a course that I would never venture in. Sometimes I think they just got plumb out of the Word of God on a goose chase. But the fact of the matter is, we know a woman that had some sort of ulcer, some sort of bleeding in her body. Life is in the blood. When the blood is gone, the life is gone. For 12 years, this woman had been plagued. When your body is low of blood, you're weak. You have no strength. You have no energy. You have no ability to hardly function in life. For 12 years, this woman had struggled. For 12 years, she had went to doctor after doctor. Undoubtedly, they had given her all kinds of medication that they had come up with, anything in the world to stop her problem. But the scripture said she grew worse. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying year number two was worse than year number one. Year number three was worse than year number two. Year number 12 was worse than year number 11. I'm talking about 12 years growing worse. We see people going through sickness. We see people going through plague. But I would say very few of us know anybody that has suffered with a disease for 12 years and has continually got worse year after year without dying sometime before 12 years. By this time, this woman had to be at the point of death. She has 
spent all that she had. She had nothing left. The only hope that she had was Jesus Christ. But I believe in the midst of that, in the midst of those 12 years, Sister PJ, I believe she had the Word of God. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm telling you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they had not been written yet. They had not been recorded yet. Those men were still walking with Jesus Christ upon the earth. That story was still being written. But what she did have was the law. What she did have was the prophets. Both the major and the minor prophets. What she did have was the Word of God. The last word that the children of Israel had of God for almost 400 years. What is that? That is the book of Malachi. There's a large gap between Malachi and Matthew. And I believe she read in there in the Malachi chapter number 4 how they said that the Son of Righteousness would arise and He would come with healing in His wings. And I believe she got a hold of that scripture, Brother Bill. Sometimes we get in a place in our life that we can read the Bible through and through and through and don't see nothing helps our situation but then all of a sudden God will give us a word or we'll read a passage of scripture and it'll prick our heart and we'll know that's a word for us and we'll take that word of God and we'll stand on that word of God through thick and through thin we can go to that word that God give us and I just have to believe this woman with the issue of blood she found that scripture and she was looking for the son of righteousness she was looking for the one with healing in her wings. And maybe she had heard how the lame were talking. Maybe she had heard how the dumb were talking. Maybe she had heard how the blind were seeing. And she probably said within herself, this must be who Malachi spoke of. This must be the one that is the son of righteousness. This must be the one that has healing in his wings. If I can but touch his clothes. I looked over in this room that has the costumes and the other things that previous attendees had here. I thought for sure I would probably find a prayer shawl in there or a garment with a fringe in it. That Jewish garment, kind of like a shawl or kind of like a poncho on the four corners of it, they would tie threads at each of the corners. It was a commandment of God all the way back in the law from every generation. You would tie these fringes on the corners of your garment and you would intertwine in the midst of that fringe, a tassel so to speak, a blue thread. And God told them that when you looked at that tassel, you would be reminded of the commandments of God. See, in the old covenant, they were to be frontless before their eyes. In 2018, we're trying to remove the commandments of God from every scene on the public forum. Remove it out of the courthouse. If we don't have the commandments of God, what is our law all about? The Old Testament was to be before them all the time. Hang it on the walls of your house. Put it over your doorpost where you're reminded of my commandments. Tie tassels on the corners of your garment. That way when you look down, you'll be reminded. He will come with healing in His wings. If I can but touch the tassel of His garment. If I can touch but one thread, Roger, of that garment. I will be made. Saints of God, some of you might feel like you're hanging by a thread. But you remember who has the other end of the yarn. You tie a knot and you hold on. That woman had spent all she had 12 years, grew worse. But the Word of God said she came in the press behind Him. Seth, get up and walk across here. Come over here and start. If he's Jesus and I want his attention, I'm going to get in front of him. I'm going to stop him. Or maybe I'm going to be like Zacchaeus and I'm going to climb up a tree where I can see him. This woman didn't climb no tree. 
She didn't get in front of him. She wasn't waving at him. She wasn't hollering at him. She simply got in the midst of the crowd. And with what energy she had left of her life, touched the fringe of his garment. She didn't grab him. She didn't lay hold to him. I believe the tip of her finger brushed the fringe of the garment. You sit down. In just one touch, 12 years of pain, 12 years of no strength, 12 years of sickness was gone. Gone instantaneously. That woman was whole. That woman had her strength. That woman had every feeling that of a normal person at that moment. She knew she had been touched. And Jesus turned around and he said, Who touched my clothes? You read the other Gospels, they'll record Jesus might have said, Who touched me? But Mark said, Who touched my clothes? Listen, you touch a lot of people every day. Somebody touched your clothes, you don't even know they touched you. But Jesus knew immediately somebody touched the fringe of his garment. For the word of God said he felt virtue leave his body. He turned around and he said, who touched me? The disciples said, what do you mean? Who touched you, Jesus? Everybody's touching you. They're throwing at you. They're grabbing you. They're all over you. What do you mean who touched me? He said, I felt virtue leave my body. Somebody touched me. And that woman, fear and trembling, come before the Lord and fell down and told him everything. I believe she went back to the fact 12 years ago. I got sick. 12 years ago, my blood count was low. For the past 12 years, I've spent everything and yet grew worse. But maybe I have stood on the Word of God that there would be a son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Maybe she told him, I've heard how you make the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. And I thought, this is my last opportunity. And if I had just touched the fringe, just touched the wing of your garment, I didn't mean to stop you. You. I didn't mean to bother you. I just wanted to reach out. And he said, daughter, be of good comfort for thy faith has made thee whole. Listen, faith without works is dead. That woman believed on the word of God, but she had to rise up and press her way through the crowd to touch him. You can have faith to move a mountain, but if you don't say into this mountain, be thou plucked up and removed and cast into the depth of the sea, the mountain is still going to be there, saints of God. we got to have have faith to act upon the Word of God. And if we'll act on the Word of God, God will do miracles in our life. That woman received her miracle. She pressed for She touched the wing of His garment. You've got a scripture. You believe on the Word of God. You stand on it and you put your faith to work. And let God touch you. That's the simplicity of the gospel. I told you I've shared that. To share a testimony with you tonight. Two years ago, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, my uncle got sick. Sinus infection. Well, maybe it's turning into the flu. Come on, we're living in the day and the season of the year. Our nose gets stopped up. Our nose starts running. Our throat gets scratchy. We start feeling bad. He started feeling bad. His wife is an office manager for probably the most popular doctor in Franklin. Sunday morning before church, 
got a call. Remember your uncle in prayer. Not feeling good. While at church, I got a call. Your uncle got up and fell down. They've called an ambulance to come and get him. I left church. I went to the emergency room to pray for my uncle. When I got there, they were working with him. I wasn't able to get in the room to pray with him. I told my aunt, we're going to be remembering him in prayer. You keep me posted. Oh, son, it's going to be all right. He's just got the flu or some bug. They'll get some antibiotics in him. He's going to be okay. Okay. I went back to church. Sunday night. Preached. In the middle of the night, the phone rang. We're having to rush your uncle to Mission Hospital. He's getting worse. I tossed and I turned in the bed. About four o'clock, I tossed and I turned. I couldn't toss and turn no more. I got up, and Sister Cocker, I believe, asked him where you're going. I said, I'm going to the hospital. I'll call you in a little while. I left at 4 a.m. and I got ready and I headed toward mission. They had him over at the St. Joseph's unit, intensive care. I walked into the hospital. By all medical standards, my uncle was laying there dead. They put central lines in to keep a heartbeat and blood pressure. Put a tube down his throat, put him on a ventilator to keep him breathing. And the nurse looked at my and said, his kidneys have failed. Well, it looked like a sinus infection, looked like just a cold, maybe just a flu, maybe just needing some antibiotics in a matter of hours. Had him virtually dead. My aunt said, I don't know if we should do dialysis or not. I just don't know what to do. I had a church member in another floor of the hospital. After sitting with him a while, praying with him, I went up to visit that room. The elevator door opened and a man and woman got out and they said, Hey, Brother Philip, how are you? To this day, I cannot tell you who they are. To me, I've never seen them before in my life. As preachers, when somebody calls you by name, you do not act like you don't know them. Hey, I'm great, brother, sister. How are you doing? Who in the world have you got up here? Hoping that they'll tell you a name where you can try to figure out who's talking to you. He didn't give me no name. He said, my dad's up here recovering from heart surgery. Hey, just about died. His kidneys failed, but they put him on dialysis and his kidneys had started working. We're going to be taking him home after a while. I don't know who that is to this day. I don't know who that was I was talking to. My aunt was downstairs struggling. I take that back. She wasn't downstairs. I caught the shuttle over to Mission Hospital. This person I ran who was in Mission, she was in St. Joe's. I went and I got the shuttle back to St. Joseph's. I went in and I told her, I said, if they want to do dialysis, you do dialysis. I just believe. God sent somebody by my way on the go to make sure we don't give up on him. He was too healthy a week ago to give up on him today. You do dialysis or whatever. She told them to do dialysis. They said if we start it, it'll be for definitely for three months, but he may be on it the rest of his life. I said, you start dialysis. All the family was praying, the churches around was praying. No change. Day after day after day. It was getting close to Christmas. Usually about seven days is about the length of time that they'll keep somebody on full life support. 
that time was pretty much up. Christmas Day, my dad and my mother went over to the hospital to be with my aunt and my uncle. While he was there, a doctor came in and daddy looked and said, What's Gary's chances? Does he just need a miracle? That doctor looked at him and he said, Sir, he's already got his miracle. He shouldn't still be here on these machines now. He's already had received his miracle. He's alive on Christmas Day. In other words, from a doctor's standpoint, they were shocked that they were able to keep him in that condition for that many length of days. But now Christmas Day has come. Nobody wants to die on Christmas. You know the thoughts going through the doctor's mind. Tomorrow we'll start talking. About cutting machines off. I got a call. Next morning, I believe it was. Uncle Gary is awake. He woke up. Mm. By three o'clock, I got a call. Uncle Gary's kidneys are working on their own. They're taking him off dialysis. I'm talking about a man that was medically dead. Central lines for blood pressure, ventilator for breathing, dialysis to clean his blood. Doctors give up, but all of a sudden, he woke up. All of a sudden, the breathing tube come out. All of a sudden, he didn't need medicine for the blood pressure. Within hours, he didn't need no dialysis for his kidneys. In a day or two, he was setting up in mm. bed. Glory. A month or two later, I passed him driving his car down the road. Thursday night, I sat across the table from him. As he was eating Thanksgiving supper. And I talked about the Georgia Bulldog football team with him. I talked with him like we'd always talk, Harold. When we'd go coon hunting and deer hunting together. I talked with him like we always talked to him when he drove the boat pulling me around on the skis on Lake Chatoog. And it wasn't until this morning when I walked in the doors of the church that God reminded me of that miracle sitting across the table. What do you say, Pastor? We preach about the woman with the issue of blood. We preach about Lazarus being resurrected from the dead. And Wednesday night, we'll preach another message. Sunday morning, we'll preach another message. But the fact of the matter is, saints of God, there is miracles happening all around us. And if we're not Amen. careful, we too quickly forget what God has done. What God done in the Word of God, God will still do today. What God done a hundred years ago, God will still do today. Amen. What Two years ago, God will still do today. We've got to remember what God has done and be not so quick to forget the miracles of God when it comes time for Thanksgiving. When I sat down at that table, my first thought when I looked across the table at Him, I should have lifted my hand and said, Thanks be to God that I can sit across the table from my uncle this Thanksgiving. But it never even crossed my mind. I'm talking about a preacher of the gospel. I'm talking about you and I. How quickly we forget the miracles of God. If we would be reminded of what all God has done for us and give Him praise and give Him thanks for the things that He has done, how much more we 
would we see God doing in our lives? How much more would we see God doing in our churches? There's times we need to take a stroll down memory lane and give God praise and give God thanks. You know what that does? It builds up our faith. It builds up our faith. And when our faith is built up, Sister Eloise, we can touch him. We can touch him. Brother Bill, Jesus didn't say, by your touch, you're made whole. He said, by your faith, you're made whole. But she put her faith to work to press through and touch the heel of his garment. Let's remember what God has done. And when we see dark hours in front of us, let's be reminded that God is no respecter of person. And Jerry, what he did for Uncle Gary, he can do for Brother Billy and touch him. What he can do for one, he can do for hope. He can bring her forth from that bed of affliction. We serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that we would ever ask of him. Let's take a walk down here. Lane. Can you do that? Can you take a walk down memory lane? I can walk down memory lane. I can walk and remember myself laying flat on my back in Mission Hospital. The grouchy old nurse coming by and cutting the power off my bed where I couldn't raise it up to talk to people. Yeah. I had a power bed, but I couldn't use it. I had to lay flat. They wouldn't even give me a pillow. All I could do was look up. But my God, when you get to the place where all you can do is look up, God's looking down. And God reached out and touched me, fused broken vertebrae back together. It took away all my pain. My God's able, Sister Eloise. I just wonder who else tonight has a miracle, has an Uncle Gary, and you want to take it down memory lane to the church tonight. Anybody?